Today we're going to be learning about roots and exponents. We're going to start off by looking at some notation that we're going to be using when we're finding the root of a power. So this is what it would look like if you have something like 2 to the power of 6 and you're finding a cube root or some other root of it. So we've got our power inside. Here we've got our radical or root sign. Whatever is inside the radical or the root sign is what we call the radicand. And in this case, it is a power because it has a base and an exponent. And then over here, we've got our radicals index. And that tells us what kind of root it is. If there's no number there, then it means there's a square root and there's actually an invisible little 2 that you can't see. But any other number tells you what the root is. Okay, so that's what it's going to look like when we're working with roots um, of powers. Okay, so let's have a look at an example over here where we are going to find the cube root of 7 to the power of 6. Okay, so first of all, when you have something like this, then remember what a root is doing is it when we're working on a root, we are finding what was originally raised to that same power, the same index power as what the root is in order to get what is inside the root sign. So I want to know, in this case, it's a cube root. So I want to know what can I cube to get 7 to the power of 6. What did it start off as before it was cubed? I want to go back to that again. Okay, to do that, I need to take the 7 to the power of 6. I'm going to split it up into groups of factors, and I need to get three identical groups of factors, and one of those groups will be the same as my cube root. The reason it's three uh, groups of factors is because I have a, a 3 over here. So whatever this number is tells us how many groups we need to divide it up into. Okay, so over here, I'm going to take my cube root of 7 to the power of 6, and this is the same as the cube root of 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times 7, because that's what 7 to the power of 6 is. It is 7 times 7 times 7 times 7 times, times 7 times 7, 6 times. Okay, so now I'm going to take those and I'm going to split it up into three separate groups. I can say these can go together, these can go together, and these can go together. So each group is 7 times 7, and I have three identical groups. Now my cube root is going to be the same as one of those groups. Now this could also be written like this. Where I could write each of those groups as a power. Okay, so the cube root, remember we said it's going to be equal to one of those groups of factors. So the cube root is equal to 7 squared. Okay, so now how can we get from here straight to here? Now this is actually something that we did do when we were finding roots using prime factorization. We did t um, start with this concept then. The way I can do it is I can say, well, I know that I would be splitting this up into three equal groups. Okay, and when I do that, what has actually happened is this exponent has been split up into three parts, three identical parts. Because I'm, I need three groups because I have a three over here. If this was a four, I would need four groups. If it was a five, I would need five groups. If there's nothing there, it's an invisible two, I would need two groups. So this number over here tells me how many groups I need to split it up into. And when I split it up, what actually happened is I, I ended up taking that exponent and it got split up and divided into that number of groups. So that six was divided by three, giving me two and two and two. So how I could have got straight from here to here is I could have just taken the 6 and divided it by the 3 and that would give me the 7 to the power of 2. So this is where our rule is going to come from now. So our rule is
when you are finding the root of a power, you keep the base the same. And you divide the exponent by the radical's index. Okay, so in this example over here, the base is my 7. It didn't change. It stayed 7. And then I take my exponent, which is 6, and I divide it by the radical's index, which is 3. Okay? Now this can also be written like this. The nth root of a to the power of m. So this means I have a power which has a base and it has an exponent. If I'm taking the nth root, any root of that power, what happens? My base is going to stay the same. So it's going to stay a, and I'm going to take my exponent, which is the m, and I'm going to divide it by my root, by the index of my radical, so that it's going to be divided by n. This can also be written like this. a is equal to m over n, because remember, a fraction is the same as division, okay? So that's just another way of writing it. Sorry, you can't see that. Okay, there we go. So we, here we've got the nth root of a to the power of m. The a stays the same. I take my exponent, whatever that exponent is, and I divide it by the radical's index. So I have m divided by n, and that is the same as a to the power of m over n. Okay. Now let's have a look at an example where we're actually going to start using this rule. So in this example, we have got the square root of 2 to the power of 8. Now remember, if you can't see an, the radical's index, it means that there is an invisible little 2. So there's a little 2 over here. So that is what we're going to be dividing by. Okay. So I'm going to take the base that I've got over there, and it's going to stay the same. I'm going to take the exponent, and I'm going to divide it by the radical's index. So I'm going to have 8 divided by 2, and that gives me 4. So the square, the, yes, the square root of 2 to the power of 8 is 2 to the power of 4. Okay, so now using that same rule, you are going to do these three questions yourself, and I'm going to give you two minutes to work on these.
Okay, so let's go through those examples. So in question A, we had the cube root of 3 to the power of 12. So when you, take, when you simplify this, the 3, the base, is going to stay the same. And we're going to take our exponent and divide it by the radicals index. So that's 12 divided by 3 is 4. So you should have got 3 to the power of 4. Then question B, our base is 11 and that stays the same. And we take the 15, the exponent, and we divide it by the 5, which is the radicals index, and that gives us 3. So that's 11 to the power of 3. And then the last one, question C, we had 7 to the power of 20, and we're taking the fourth root of that. So we're going to have 7 stays the same, and 20 divided by 4 is 5. So you should have got 7 to the power of 5 for question C. Okay, let's have a look at another example. Now in this example, we've got a little bit more that's going on. So we have got... 3 to the power of 15 and 5 to the power of 21 inside that root sign. Okay, so I've got over here 3 to the power of 15 times 5 to the power of 21, and we're finding the cube root of that. Okay, now what we learned in the last lesson where we had a power of a product, we were raising a product to a power, we learned that factors, when you have a product, there are factors, we're going to apply the rule to each factor on its own. The same thing happens when we're working with roots over here as well. So I'm going to take the rule that we've just been doing and I'm going to apply that rule to each factor of this product. Okay, so over here the 3 is going to stay the same. I'm going to divide its exponent, which is 15, by the radicals index, which is also 3. So 15 divided by 3 gives me 5. So that gives me 3 to the power of 5 times, and then I have 5 to the power of, and I'm going to divide its exponent, which is 21, by 3, and that gives me 7. So that gives me 5 to the power of 7. So for that one, I get 3 to the power of 5 times 5 to the power of 7. Okay, so now you're going to do the same thing for the next examples, and I'm going to give you two minutes again to work on these. Okay, let's go through those examples. So question A, you had 5, or the fifth root of 2 to the power of 25 times 7 to the power of 15. So first of all, we're going to work out the fifth root of 2 to the power of 25. By taking the 2 to the power of 25, we keep the base the same, and we divide the exponent by 5, and that gives us 5. So that gives you 2 to the power of 5 times. Then I'm going to take the fifth root of 7 to the power of 15, so that's 7 stays the same, and I divide the 15 by 5, and that gives me 3. So it's 2 to the power of 5 times 7 to the power of 3 for question A. 
Question B, we are finding the square root. Remember, there's an invisible little 2 that you can't see over here. But that's what we're going to be dividing by. Okay? So the 11 stays the same. And then I'm going to divide 6 by 2, and that gives me 3. So it's 11 to the power of 3 times. And then 13 stays the same. And I divide 10 by 2, and that gives me 5. So I have 11 to the power of 3 times 13 to the power of 5. And then the last one, I have... 5 to the power of 18 over 7 to the power of 13, and I'm finding the 6th root of that. So the 5 stays the same, and I divide the 18 by 6, and that gives me 3, over 7 to the power of 13. The 7 stays the same, and I divide the 30 by 6, and that gives me 5. So that gives me 5 cubed over 7 to the power of 5 for question C. Okay, now we're going to go on to the last example that I'm going to be doing with you, and that is this one over here. We've got 3 to the power of 4. Times the fourth root of 3 to the power of 20. Okay. So just like when we had exponents or powers in brackets and so on, we have to um, use bed mass, and that says that if there's anything inside, now a root sign acts like brackets, so if there's anything that I need to do inside the root sign, I do that first, but in this case I don't need to, and then exponents come next, and roots go along together with exponents. So they go in the same step as exponents in bed mass. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this over here. Okay, so I'm going to take the 3 to the power of 4s and stay the same, times, and then I take this over here, the base, stays the same, and I'm going to divide the 20 by 4, and that gives me 5. So now I've got 3 to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 5, they have the same base, which means I can simplify that, and I keep, I keep the base the same, and I add the exponent, and that gives me 3 to the power of 9. So that's what you should get for that example. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to work on for yourself. And I'm going to give you four minutes to work on these.
Okay, let's go through each of those examples. So starting with question A, we had the square root of 11 to the power of 4 and 7 to the power of 6 multiplied by the 8th root of 11 to the power of 32 times 7 to the power of 24. Okay, so we're going to start off by doing the square root over here. Remember, there's an invisible little 2 over there, which we're going to divide by. So I've got 11 to the power of 4 divided by 2 is 2 times 7 to the power of 6 divided by 2 is 3 times. Then over here, I've got 11 to the power of 32 divided by 8 is 4 times 7 to, uh, 7 to the power of 24 divided by 8 is 3. Okay, now this over here, I could have put this in brackets and this in brackets if I wanted to, but remember it's all just multiplication, okay, so it doesn't need to be in brackets, but I can keep it in brackets if I wanted to. Remember, your root sign is acts like brackets, so when we get rid of it by applying that, we could keep it in brackets as well. Okay, and now we're going to multiply together. I'm going to put my 7 first because I want to have my smaller base first. So I've got 7 to the power of 3 plus 3 is 6 times 11 to the power of 2 plus 4 is also 6. Okay. And then we're going to do question B. We've got 3 squared times the 4th root of 5 to the power of 16 times 3 to the power of 20 and then times the 7th root of 5 to the power of 21 times 3 to the power of 28. Okay, so first of all, the 3 squared is going to stay as it is for now. And then I've got times the 4th root of 5 to the power of 16 is 5 to the power of 16 divided by 4 is 4. Times 3 to the power of 20 divided by 4 is 5. Times the 7th root of 5 to the power of 21 is 5 to the power of 3, because 21 divided by 7 is 3, times the 7th root of 3 to the power of 28 is 4, because 28 divided by 7 is 4. And now I'm going to simplify all of that by multiplying and keeping my, uh, multiplying where I keep the bases together, the, the like bases together. So I'm going to use the 3s first, so I've got 3 to the power of 2 plus 5 is 7, plus 4 is 11, times, then I've got my 5s, that's 4 plus 3 is 7. So that's 3 to the power of 11 times 5 to the power of 7. Okay, then question C. I've got 2 to the power of 5 times 7 squared, to the, all in brackets, to the power of 4. Then I've got a fifth root of 7 to the power of 25 and 2 to the power of 30. Then I've got a sixth root of 2 to the power of 18 and 7 to the power of 24. Okay, so I'm going to start off by working out this exponent over here by taking that 4 and applying it to each of the factors inside. So that's going to be 2 to the power of 5 times 4 is 20, because remember, when we are raising a power to a power, we multiply the exponents together, we keep the base the same. So the 2 stays the same, and I multiply the 5 by the 4, and I get 20 times. Then over here, I have 7 to the power of 2 times 4 is 8. Okay, so that's sorted out that set of brackets over there. Now I'm going to go on to the next radical, and I'm going to say times, and I have 7 to the power of 25 divided by 5 is 5 times 2 to the power of 30 divided by 5 is 6 times then I've finished this radical and I'm going to the last radical so now I have 2 to the power of 18 divided by 6 is 3 times 7 to the power of 24 divided by 6 is 4 Okay, so now I've simplified all of those, now I can go and I can put it all together, all the things that have the same basis. So I'm going to put my 2's together. So I've got 2 to the power of 20 times 2 to the power of 6. I add the exponents, that can be 2 to the power of 26. And then times 2 to the power of 3, I add that exponent as well, that can be 2 to the power of 29 times all my 7's. I've got 7 to the power of 8 times 7 to the power of 5, so 8 plus 5 is 13. And then I've got 7 to the power of 4, so I add the 4, and that gives me uh, 17. So 7 to the power of 17. So that's what you should have got for question C. And then the last one, we've got 11 to the power of 4 times the square root of 2 to the power of 6 times 11 to the power of 10. And all of that is in brackets, and it needs to be cubed. So first, we have to simplify what is inside here. Okay, so I'm going to... Inside here, the 11 to the power of 4 is going to stay as it is. 
and I'm going to multiply that by the square root of each of these. So the square root of 2 to the power of 6 is 2 cubed times. The square root of 11 to the power of 10 is 11 to the power of 5. And then the cube root of that, or the cube of that. So now I have a choice. I can simplify what's inside here and then do my exponent, or I can do my exponent and then simplify, because they're all going to, it's going to end up doing the same thing either way. Okay, so I'm going to simplify what's inside first. And that can be 11 to the power of 4 times 11 to the power of 5 is 11 to the power of 9 times 2 to the power of 3 cubed. Okay, and now I'm going to cube all of that. I'm going to put my 2 first. So I've got 2 to the power of 3 times 3 is 9 times 11 to the power of 9 times 3 is 27. So that's what I get for the last question. Okay, and that is how we work with roots and exponents. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.